Sarah, we're 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 excited. We're back. We're recording. You're in sunny California. I am. Um, if if everyone felt what happened over the weekend, uh, which I'm sure many people did, Sarah and Russ got together in person. Oh yes. Uh, we shared ice cream together. We talked shop. Um, this is only the second time it's happened. So there was you know a little a bit disturbance of disturbance in the force. Happened. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, but. But we're back, we're, and we're both <laughs> on the same time zone. Uh, we're sharing the same sun today, uh, and I, we get to welcome in our, our newest guest, and I want you to do the introduction because, of course, these are all people that you know, and I just get to enjoy uh, you know, being part of your world. Yes, yeah, so we're going to welcome uh, Amitai, and I'm hoping I've got that pronunciation wrong. Right. <laughs> uh, and he's on the other coast, so he's also got the sunshine, but he's got the Miami sunshine. And uh, so, so I'm going to tell you someone that I've met a couple of biohacking events now, actually Paleo FX and the biohacking uh, event in Miami. And he had a stand which had uh, cosmetics and skin creams and things, which is something that normally I, I am not into, as you can probably tell. But he lured me in. He had like red lights. And then when I got there, he was talking so much about you know, how you can affect health from the outside in. And we were talking about how you can activate things with red light. So I'm very, very happy uh, to have you on, Amitai. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And we're really looking forward to hearing from you because uh, from the brief conversations I have had with you, I know you're a, a huge wealth of knowledge on all of this stuff. So, so really nice to see you again. Thank you very much. It's it's great to be here. And, um, you know, I'm obviously very excited because I, I uh, love you, Sarah. I, I think you're, uh, again, you're uh, someone we need in our community, right? Because I consider myself uh, part of the biohacking community or the health optimization community. And, and building that community is something that's very important to me specifically. And I think probably we're going to get more into, um, um, like, defining what that community means because it's kind of uh all over the place at the moment a little um, bit yeah yeah i'm very very excited to uh to have this conversation and and um you know for sure so, I, I i i'm sorry i wasn't in miami i i don't get to leave you my house out. often and when they yeah when they do there's warning signs that go off and air raid warnings when i do leave my house just to give you know everyone a heads up i'm out of the house but I, I'm curious. So, cosmetics. So, are you? Are you a? Are, is your superpower skin? Are you an expert on skin? Because I have so much to talk about here. I, I'm, I'm super <laughs> curious about it. So, I think my superpower is, um, you know, uh, building a a system, whatever that is, like a biohacking or health optimization system that would eventually express itself in a healthy, young-looking skin. So it's not necessarily just cosmetics per se, even though that is the brand we, I co-founded is a, you know, it's considered like the, the world's first biohacking skincare. Um, I consider myself someone that just refers to the skin as far as the success of, of the health journey that someone would, would, be going, uh, would be going through. And that is obviously why we were talking a lot about red light therapy, uh, Sarah and I. But it, it is it is all encompassing everything that that, you know, is a good health habit that would eventually express itself in healthier skin is is my superpower, I would say. And and skin, I obviously there's I mean, I, I know my skin. I stare at it. I've had recently I've been getting treated for basal cell, a few basal cell carcinomas because I had radiation therapy when I was in my 20s for for cancer. I. I, I'm curious about skin. Is it, you know, is it regenerative? Uh, is it always breaking down? Is it always going to show this stuff on my neck that I'm getting older? Like, are there ways for us to, to, to hack it and reverse those, those, those trends and clean up our wrinkles and clean up our skin and prevent these basal cell carcinomas that keep showing up now on my skin? Like, what, what are the things that we can do to kind of turn that around? So actually, you know, uh, 
the if if we could look at the matrix right and we can kind of break down to to the to its basic kind of what you were asking it's these are two different avenues we can take as far as how we look and how our skin can can ex- express kind of our biological age or instead of our chronological age and another one would be why am i getting those quote unquote like mistakes that my skin makes right which is which is basal cell carcinomas or whatever that it may be but it's actually uh ca- kind of the same thing but we can address it differently so f- to address the first question that you asked the good news or the bad news are that research shows that your biological age as a whole is really tied up to your to your to your the way that your skin looks so i mean if we can dial back the the biological age a little bit or affect it or at least prevent it from progressing faster than we would want to we can affect how our skin ages as well um and and your second question is actually a a a a, a sub subcategory within it so when we talk about skin aging in general we one of the main culprits of that is is dna damage dna repair dna mistakes etc so anything that's got to do with the dna so whether it's radiation or just going out and and enjoying the sun in in california or, or florida these um types of high energy that meets our skin does damage the dna and with that dna damage what what happens is that you're basically what is the dna really it's basically like the recipe of who you are right recipe of of who is ross sarah amitai whoever that may be and obviously in every cell in our body the entire dna is present but most of it is turned off and only what is essential for that cell is turned on and when we go through a traumatic event getting older whatever that is the part that's turned on gets damaged but also parts that are supposed to be off get turned on and vice versa and a lot of what we deal with in longevity science in general and with um maybe age reversal is kind of dealing with that part of the dna making sure that what needs to stay on is on and is coherent is easily read of red and vice versa so what's to, supposed to be off that actually is a recipe of how to be a heart cell or a, or um you know whatever that is is turned off so there are less mistakes these are just like two things within a small bubble or actually it's not that small but within one one area of of aging there are other things that contribute to to those mistakes like inflammation uh but or mitochondrial decline or your cells not being able to replicate themselves well but all of those things together which we can solve through different modalities affect how your skin ages affects the mistakes that he makes etc i i i want to go off on a little bit of a side tangent amitai because i'm interested in your view on the sun just because you know in all uh, because i go to a lot of the biohacking things and also i follow jack cruz and kind of the messaging there is that you should not have put anything on your skin when you're going out in the sun because you don't want to block those rays if you're kind of following the normal routine of kind of seeing the sun rise so you're getting the the morning red light and you're seeing sunset but what do you think about that do you think it is very damaging and there are things you can put on that are not gonna block the good effects but are going to prevent that damage so yeah first of all just to give a short short answer i think that the sun is a big culprit in in skin aging that's that's number one and that that it should we should protect our skin from uh more like uh between like 10 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. if we're outside and we're going to be outside for over 20 minutes we should be protecting our skin and if we're like in australia or somewhere where where the sun is even more damaging than then we should take even more precautions there are ways to take care of our skin or to protect our skin in a more like biohacky way or you know holistic way it doesn't mean we should spray ourselves with like chemi- chemically laden as SPF sunblocks 
but we can do a few things as far as strategies to mitigate sun damage. And because, uh, you know, obviously Sarah is like a red light guru, one of the things that uh, they were showing in a beautiful research in, in Korea in the Medical University of, of Seoul uh, is how exposing ourselves to red light therapy before, you know, exposing ourselves to the sun mitigates some of the sun damage. Um, but in general, that is, that's number one. And, and obviously, Dr. Jack Roos is, is, is an awesome guy. He's very, you know, inspired. But, you know, that's not someone that I would specifically get my skincare routine uh, from. And it, I think it's a very uh, Puritan attitude to just look at the effects of sunlight on our mitochondria and just say, you know, that is the only thing that matters. So when UV light, which is obviously, we, we are not denying that UV light, you know, exists in, in sun rays, right? Um, when it meets our DNA, it basically fuses very specific parts of our DNA together. And those parts are much harder to read and that creates mistakes, etc. So we, there is no way around it. The other part of it is we use the sun through our eyes and through our cells to modulate different processes in the body. So obviously it's extremely, extremely important to expose our eyes to, you know, the sun when it's close to the horizon, also in sunrise and also in sunsets set. And we can, we can manage our biological clock, which manages all of our uh, processes, hormones, etc. That is extremely important. Um, but, but it, even though, the, the culprit is this, like the subject is the same, sun exposure. It's completely different as far as if we're saying, okay, how are we aging? How, how are we mitigating damage to our skin? Or how are we kind of interacting with our body in, a, in the most like natural, uh, primordial way, whatever, of, of, of giving the right cues to our body? So what would you put on your skin in that case? Because I have this ongoing battle. In fact, I had a bit of a row with the woman in the chemist the other day because I was buying makeup and I didn't want to have sun protection factor in. And now almost you can't buy that. You know, I so I had to buy some obscure thing. And, you know, actually she kind of wrestled it off me. She didn't even want to sell it to me because people are so convinced that you need to have a lot of sun protection factor. So what can you put on that's going to give you that that's not the, the chemical version? So there, in general, maybe maybe to make sure that that we communicate or I communicate to everyone, regardless of their kind of knowledge, there are two types of families that protect you from the sun. Uh, one family is 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 our chemicals who absorb sunlight, and the other are you know also chemicals, but a more natural solution, uh, old fashioned solution that kind of repels sunlight. And the difference between the two is quite large as far, as far as how they interact with sunlight and the effects on our body. So we, we all know chemical SPFs, but there is another family. If you remember where, you know, when you were growing up, uh, lifeguards used to put like a white powder on their nose. That was zinc oxide. And zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are two co compounds that aren't very popular right now in in you know, natural sunblocks, if you would, that actually are much, much, much safer for us. And the reason is because chemical SPFs, you can even look at them like almost like a, like a sunglasses lens on our skin. And this is a, a, a physical block that sits on our skin and absorbs some of the sunlight. It also kind of warms up and changes its chemical um, it's chemical makeup, but also actually one of the things that happen from sun exposure is detoxification. So our skin actually pushes toxins to the surface and obviously it releases them. And that film uh, that chemical SPFs create doesn't let those toxins leave the skin that much and concentrates them on the, on the top layers of our skin. So we get that double whammy of, 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 bad effects, if you would. Um, and that is, that is the reason I wouldn't use chemical SPFs. As a, when we're talking about zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, they do allow the skin to breathe and they actually 
uh, repel some of the sun uh, sun uh, wavelengths, so they're not or the UV wavelengths, so they're not absorbing them as much as it uh, repels them off our skin, and that is why they're a better choice. So zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are two uh, chemicals that are much more fr friendly for our skin. And when we are, you know, so we are working now uh, in, on our brand, uh, we're working on a sunblock. That's these are the compounds we were looking to use, and not other ones who were more harmful. Yeah, cool. I'll be looking forward to that then because I've probably totally, I mean, because I have been following the whole Jack Cruz thing and all the rest of, you know, there are a lot of people who advocate not having anything on. But because of that, you know, I do go out in the, bla you know, and I'm a total sun worshipper. So I am sitting out in the blazing sun and I've done that for many years. So I expect, you know, I need, I need the sun lotion, but then I also need what you're going to tell us about, I'm sure, which will help to reverse some of those aging effects because I definitely think I have probably done that to myself over the years for sure yeah and and you know i think in general and that is our yeah, that's kind of my philosophy as far as like um biohacking is concerned it's a relationship between stimulation stimulation for repair and optimizing our body in in, in the context context of repair like optimizing our function our body's health in order for it to repair optimally and these two things, we can kind of refine them. We can make sure that the stimulation we create doesn't um, create long-term damage. And that is normally through processes that are, that are hormetic, if you would. And we can talk about hormesis, but um, these processes. And then obviously health optim optimization, you know, reduction of inflammation, cellular energy through uh, you know, NAD or mitochondrial support or anything like that. And these two things together work great, but they also work great individually to either signal some da damage repair or to make sure our body can, can handle ongoing damage. It could be, you know, us living in a city and getting exposed to pollution, us getting exposed to high, uh, high velocity artificial light from screens and things like that. And obviously, if we are doing something that is supposed to, you know, stimulate our body to repair, um, making sure our body repairs well. So that relationship is, is obviously crucial. Most of the time, you can see I'm wearing an aura ring. So most of the things that we want to measure, yes, yeah, so I see Russ is wearing one too. <laughs> so most of the times when we want to make sure we're going on, on the right path, we want to have a measurable effect, right? Unfortunately, in the context of skin, it's quite difficult to get it right away. And we make many, many either micro, bad or good decisions throughout our day and our lives, which express themselves later on. So we, you know, we talked about having radiation therapy in our 20s and paying for that. You know, decades later, we we talked about you know reversing some of the some of the uh, damage from you know sun exposure throughout throughout our life, etc. 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 So it's very it's a very tricky relationship, and normally we want to repair damage that's already permanent, basically. Uh, so we want to kind of go back, and it's almost like a bone that didn't heal well after it got broken, right? And we really need to go back, re-break that bone, and make sure that our body now heals better. Um, and, and we can talk about how we do it. There, there are ways to do it. But it's not as simple as just now having lived a healthy life from now on. Okay, again, like imagine a bone. It's not like if I, uh, if I broke my finger and now my finger is kind of going to, in the wrong direction. And now I, I eat kale the 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 <laughs> finger is going to rip, repair itself right that's not not how it works we kind of need to trace it back and just yeah. you know i'm i'm not going to eat kale in general but uh, <laughs> i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to have to manipulate that finger i'm going to have to make sure it i re-break i create damage that i'm communicating to my body to reheal in a better way and then support that healing process um when we when we talk about the skin, 
most of the complaints we get are in, in a few categories. The first category is obviously like skin laxity. Um, another one would be uh, wrinkles or rigid skin, which creates wrinkles, pigmentation, and scarring, basically. Um, and I think through the explanation, that, that overarching explanation, we can apply that to any one of those categories, whether it would be wrinkles, uh, whether it would be pigmentation, whether it would be laxity, uh, lack, lack of elasticity, if we would, uh, dullness, scarring, they're all damage that has been accumulated over time or mistakes in repair that has accumulated over time. Yeah. Um, and in all of those processes, we, we can't, again, kale's not going to fix it. But the good news are, as time goes on, we learn what fixes them well and what is not as, as good of a choice. So if, you look, if you'd look at uh, prominent skincare brands in the last 20 years, what you would see a lot in general is stimulation for repair through peeling. Um, and that has a huge gaping hole in that theory. And that, that gaping hole is the fact that we are kind of drawing on, so we're asking a lot of repair, constant repair, but we're not really fuel, fueling those repair processes. And, and what happens is your, your skin's kind of drawing on reservoirs that it's saved for later, later on in our lives. Um, and what it creates is a thinner skin, skin that is that is repairing itself less well as we grow older. And we all know people who have been following these kind of, um, let's say, these protocols for, for 20, 30 years. If we look at, our, at their skin, it looks extremely thin, uh, you know, um, probably a little bit rigid, more rigid than a normal skin. And um, we've basically depleted the amount of times this these tissue this tissue can regenerate itself yeah that's a bit scary really it's short-term gain what is what you're saying you're kind of getting a short-term effect and then long term you're damaging your skin which people don't know when they do it do they and then of course how repairable is that damage right and I, I, I was gonna yeah i was gonna say a terrible you know dad joke here but uh those that do the chemical peels those that do the chemical peels seem to be more sensitive people. They're thin skin. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I, I, I do. So when it comes to damaged skin, so Sarah in the sun, me under, you know, the radiation uh, linear accelerator at Stanford, uh, you know, is it immediate that you need to do something to repair your skin? Is it something that you can do over time? Cause I'm 25 years out now from, from that but like let's talk about a sunburn um is it is there something immediate that you should do for a sunburn so you don't have the long-term damage um that is the things that you've seen that can help that so actually i love that question uh especially because i can i can display my contrarian um uh tendencies so what i would say is is that you should have you should have prepped yourself beforehand, not even immediate or, or, you know, years later, but really that is where a healthy lifestyle and kind of optimizing your health plays a role. Um, what I mean by that is we age in spurts. We also, uh, you know, when, uh, when you see a, a child grow, uh, they measure their, their growth and they don't just grow, you know, 0 0.2 inches every, every day or something like that. They grow in spurts, right? So they're going to grow. They're not going to grow for a couple of days, and then they're going to grow, you know, over, seemingly overnight. And that's what really happens. So uh, the same way as, as far as aging, we're going to experience some traumatic event like a sunburn, for that matter, or lack of sleep, uh, a pathogen, whatever that may be. And seemingly overnight, we're going to we're going to age, and that is why we want to lead as much of a healthy lifestyle as we could throughout our lives to kind of prep our body for that event and make sure our body responds to that event positively. Obviously, that's something that's very popular right now because of the, the you know, the 
the pandemic that that we've went through and and people understanding that they should have 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 had taken care of their health preemptively yeah, before yeah <laughs> yes for sure yeah and so that is that is why to answer your question the best is prevention or the best is kind of prepping the body but re, but to address what you were asking both are things you can do so if we think of that you know finger getting broken um, and what should we do? We should definitely, if we can, take care of it immediately, right? Set it immediately, support it in order for it to repair itself, you know, as quickly and as, as, as favorably as possible. It's not always the case, right? We have, we, it's not always that we've made the right decision at the right time immediately. Oftentimes, it's those times where we make the, you know, the wrong decision in hindsight, uh, maybe something else was more, more important that day. Maybe we are very, you know, work oriented and we don't care about that broken bone and we we have something to do as far as work is concerned. Time passes one month, two months, three months, one year, two years, and we realize that we should have made a different decision back then. So what do we do now? That is where we need to reintroduce damage, whatever that may be. Now we're kind of transitioning to the skin, but you can still think of bones, but we're we are reintroducing damage in order to signal to the body, okay, we really need to repair that better. Um, you could do it by chemical peels, lasers, things like that, things that are more aggressive, but we can, if we are a more diligent person that can, that can do something over time, um, that is something that we can do gradually with things like microneedling, uh, retinoids. Um, uh, now, you know, a new, new technologies uh, come out which uh, involve uh, peptides, PRP. So things that are more gradual that we need to do more often, we need to be disciplined, but long term would benefit us more. Um, that is one side of it. But if we did that, you know, that signal for repair and we're not following up with good support to it, that's not going to be. A, an optimal result. Why is that? It's because our skin is going to have to resort to drawing upon resources that it was saving for later, for a later event. And again, we're going back to the loop of, oh, we should live our, live our life in the most healthy way possible in order for us to be able to deal with future scenarios that you can bet yourself that are going to happen. Yeah, um, for sure. So we're going into yeah. that loop all the time. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, in this podcast, we kind of got to the basics. You know, we've had Molly on talking about sleep. We've had Kristin talking about breath work. You know, th those are kind of the basic things that you're talking about. You have to get that piece sorted out. You have to look after your sleep. You have to do functional movement. But so say we're kind of at that level. I think a lot of us, well, certainly myself, you know, skin is something that I think about last. And you're right, I am busy. I may be working late at night and I've got blue light coming at my face. I try and mitigate against those things, get a good night's sleep. But what are some of these new technologies? Because that's an interesting thing. Let's yeah. take it that we've done a lot of our biohacking and we're kind of at that level where we've got a good diet, we've got good sleep. So what are these kind of nuances that you're talking about? I know you mentioned peptides and you have some, some other technology. Yes. So as far as, as, far as signals for repair, um, we, we specifically in Young Goose, the company that, that, that we founded, we use a very uh, special type of retinol that damages the innermost layer of the skin that's called the hypodermis. And by creating that very controlled damage, we're doing two things. We're kind of creating a new layer that rises to the surface eventually. And that layer is a newer layer with less damage involved within it. And the second thing is that it activates basal cells, which are the skin's stem cells. Um, and by doing that, again, we're creating a much healthier tissue. Uh, that's, that's you know, one thing to do. Another is microneedling and its derivatives. So there are a few like uh, microneedling is now a whole, you know, a whole family of technologies. But really what it means is we have little needles that are, you know, the extremely small in diameter and they can create very precise damage, which our skin repairs quite easily. If we go to a professional, they have needles that are a little bit 
damaging more and they pair them up with a with, again with some kind of like repair fuel with some support that the skin can kind of use and 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 support its uh repair process so um very 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 uh, advanced uh you know, dermatologists or, or medical professionals are going to use a peptide called BPC-157 to do that. And that's a peptide. So that's basically like a peptide is a, is a protein that is used in our body as a, as a code, like a computer code to do something specific. So BPC-157 is the computer code of our body when the gut lining is being damaged and the body expresses this peptide to ask for repair. So by damaging the skin and supplying BPC-157, we're kind of saying, okay, hey, please invest a lot of energy in, in repairing this, this layer. Another extremely popular thing is uh, something called vampire fa facial, which is basically PRP, platelet-rich plasma, ma matched with control damage like, uh, like microneedling. And, and what's going to happen is we're going to take blood, which blood obviously brings within it a lot of nutrients, and we're going to um, basically centrifuge that blood. So we're going to spin that blood very, very fast to separate it to different layers. Then we're going to extract only the layer of the goodies, basically, of growth factors, of uh, supportive molecules. We're going to draw those out and now supply them to the skin, basically spread them out uh, on the skin while uh, the skin needs to repair itself after microneedling. So that's a technology that's been around for a couple of decades, uh, mainly really popular in the last decade. In the last few years, we have the kind of next generation of that, of that technology, which are either stem cells or... Um, or a specific part of the stem cells that is called that are called exosomes, which are little again they're they're almost like peptides in the fact that they are communication molecules. But that's what stem cells use to communicate between each other. So we're kind of we're kind of tricking the body to to recruit more stem cells to the area. So w these are so from from our kind of of, of meta analysis of like repair uh, damage and repair. These are things that improve repair, and in the improvement of damage, we can look at things like uh, radio frequency uh, matched, which is basically like a very precise damage caused by radio waves matched with microneedling or um, things of that nature, which refine the damage, make sure that the damage is more precise. Um, and less harmful to where there's less collateral damage, if you would, which, again, we don't want, so we don't draw on more resources than we would need to. So that is how we re that's how we rewind uh, damage. You could do it uh, from within your body. So you could, you could uh, when I say, so you could support something from within the body. We can do microneedling at home, if we do it, make sure we sterilize the microneedling device that we have and support it with good nutrition. Again, everything that you've you've that you've covered in sleep, everything you've covered in other podcasts, and obviously use good skincare or good supplements. Do NADIVs, whatever that may be, to make sure that we supply our body with with uh, the health that it needs to repair itself optimally wow i mean that that is really next level isn't it and like you say you really do have to do the basics first because you know it's no use doing this the vampire facial if you're then you know sitting at home watching telly or not and eating eating crisps but th that is very interesting that what you're actually saying is you're kind of actually kind of getting worse to get better you are actually causing some kind of damage that the body is then having its own reaction and is then coming back better than before. Yeah, obviously we have to come to grips with the way our body or, or we as humans evolved, right? We evolved to uh, create offsprings 
be able to tr to take care of those off offsprings later on. But that's the end of the that's the end of the road <laughs> as far as our body is concerned. So damage uh, past a certain point, our body's just you know conserving resources to make sure that it that it can you know survive whatever hardship is is coming on and not really it's not in an abundance state and you know going around and repairing all the damage is kind of an abundant state so we have to we have to follow you know trace back create create that traumatic event if you would and that's where kind of biohacking comes in what is biohacking right we're distilling down the 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 most precise most accurate way to communicate with our body through changing our environment through change cha changing the biological environment within us changing that environment in the most precise way without causing you know collateral damage and then supporting that environment in again in the most precise way as well um and that those two things together are are essential. When we talk about, you know, skin specific, that environment, really, um, we can divide it into three. So we can, we can look at the amount of energy our cells have to repair themselves. The an understanding or their ability to repair themselves through you know, good information from our DNA, basically, and uh, good support. When, when I say support, I mean circulation and toxin removal. Okay, so if, if we have energy because our, our cells can make abundant energy, our mitochondria in our cells functions optimally, and our cells have the ability to repair themselves, okay? They need to know how to do it. So they need good DNA da uh, data, uh, they need to, uh, you know, to have the um, the uh, ability to function correctly with with uh, less inflammation involves involved, and then we, they also need the actual building blocks and to to be able to, you know, to uh, vacate toxins after that process has been has been um, completed, and that those are kind of the three things that we can take care of on a regular basis to maintain that system for, for the, the day where we want massive repair to happen. Because these processes are like going to the gym. They take time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and you're right. It is that, that is the whole point of biohacking. I liked what you said there, to, to keep the body in an abundant state. Because you're right, you know, with time, we're constant fight. We're fighting against that all the time. So you need to have the energy. You need to get rid of the toxins or at least reduce the toxins that you're getting in. Activate those pathways. Then you can do these, you know, these new techniques that are going to have these amazing effects on your skin. But you have to do the groundwork first is what you're saying. And and it's and it's consistency is diligence. And you're, you're kind of it's you're fighting against that resistance of nature to kind of, you know, you're fighting against entropy in a way. So it's an active process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say too, I, I, you know, skin gets a bad rap just like the sun does. Uh, and we had a mold expert on the other day and he, you know, mold gets a bad rap, right? Like, and I, but I think skin gets a bad rap because um, it's vanity, right? It's how you look. Um, versus your health, uh, and, and, you know, gut health, muscle, you know, muscle health, brain health, those are all things that we, you know, relate to how we live our lives and, you know, we, we, how we feel, but skin is how you look. Uh, but I wonder in, in kind of what you're saying, it sounds like what you're saying is your skin is also, cause it is a gigantic organ. Uh, it, it does impact how you feel, um, cause it's all interconnected. So, how how do you kind of change the nomenclature a little bit, or the narrative a little bit about skin? Because it always is about, well, God, I got wrinkles and I look like, and it's always about how I look in the mirror versus how I feel and it being part of the whole, you know, ecosystem of the body. 
Yeah, so actually, you, you're spot on. And, and it's sometimes it's, it's funny to me that um, someone, can, someone can be described as like vain if they care about their, the health of their skin or the optimal performance of their skin. But if they were to, you know, to take as seriously like their liver or their lungs, let's say, you know, I want to have like the best functioning lungs of all times. I want my <laughs> lungs to be 20 year old lungs when I'm 80. No one's going to, you know, no one's going to ca- characterize that person as extremely vain. But really, so my, my kind of way to uh, maybe recruit people to my cause is by explaining that we are all vain. We are just allocating it differently or we all have our ego parked somewhere. So I am, uh, I'm in love with, with jujitsu. That's kind of my, my uh, hobby, which I do every day religiously. And if, you know, we have now a, uh, an 18 year old kid that is going to be, you know, very famous uh, in the next few years and he's kicking my ass. Right. And I remember him when he was 13, 14, 15. Uh, and that is where my ego is parked. So for me, that's vanity. Right. When he's, you know, you know, pushing me around, that's very difficult for me. For other people, it's going to be the way that their skin look. For other people, it's going to be how their brain functions. And if, and if someone's smarter than them, them or quicker witted, you know, uh, have a faster uh, memory recall than them, for that matter. So it's really another organ that some people park their ego there. Uh, and obviously, if you're if uh, you're a, a uh, man, we all know people who are. A, you know, are not vain by any straight stretch of the Im- imagination, but try to talk to them about hair loss. Mm-hmm. Um, and there you see how they're, they're freaking out. Why? Not because they care specifically about how they look. Maybe they mar- they're happily married, but that's something that th- is connected between kind of a youthful state and their inner, inner identity. Right. Um, so all I'm doing is, and, and, and you, you have done it yourself by, by kind of stating that this is an organ, I'm just kind of connecting between us wanting to identify as, as, as young, you know, of, of vital people and something that's going on in our, in our life. And sometimes the ego is parked in our skin. And I believe it's a positive it's a positive avenue because you really have a direct link between how your skin behaves and the habits that you're that you're dedicating uh, your 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 mental capacity to on a regular basis. So, if you don't care about your skin, you might want to do some mental exercises to care in order to draw <laughs> yeah. motivation from it for a healthier lifestyle. So. Someone who's a smoker that has a hard time quitting smoking, for example, and obviously in America we see less and less of that, but it's still it's still there. Um, if they really did, you know, convince themselves that they want to look better, that's a huge motivation to stop smoking or or to reduce smoking dramatically, because they know that it's putting them, you know, you're you're accumulating. Uh, wrinkles, pigmentation, liver spots, how they're called, because, because our liver doesn't function as well, etc. As far as, 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 um, as how we do it in a more, in a more um, quantified way, how do we really measure our, our skin age? Again, Something very interesting is the way that our skin looks has direct correlation to our general biological age. So if we only care about our general biological age, we only care about being there for our grandchildren and their kids or whatever, that's a great place to start and tell yourself that's just a kind of lackness test to my general age if I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars per test per year to measure my, my age, etc. 
Yeah, for sure. And I've started, as I've got older, you know, noticing things about the way you look like, even though I have like a big frown, I think, oh my goodness, is that years of frowning? You know, you know, the line there. And I've started to think, okay, maybe that's something to be aware of. You know, what is my state? Am I kind of frowning at people? And, and I've become, I've tried to become more aware of making sure I'm smart, you know, what am I doing to kind of cause it? Am I really tense all the time? You know, it's kind of your face does actually tell a picture I, I found after a while. And even like maybe, you know, you may get some outbreaks on your skin, but that's probably telling a story about your gut, you know, because everything's connected. So kind of picking up those cues from your skin is also very interesting, I think. It is. And it, and it is a relationship. So what happens when, you know, our skin Again, from actually from a lot of a lot of it is from sun damage, but it doesn't only have to be from sun damage. It can be from the gut, from uh, ingestion of, of uh, simple carbohydrates, sugars, etc. Our skin is becoming more rigid through glycation, through through AGEs basically, uh, and through uh, DNA damage, etc. And that rigidity basically is the reason that we when we move our skin around, we are kind of demarcating it, right? We're we're marking it and accumulation accumulating that that loss of elasticity in a specific place. So it is kind of a multi, multi-causal uh, uh, effect that we get in our skin. The good news, as, as I said, there are technologies out there, as, and we've, we've gone through some of them that can rewind that. But we do really want to make, kind of, kind of understand that we can kind of rewind the appearance of, of youth but we're, we, are, we are working on a daily basis against the natural path of aging. And if we're not, and first of all, and that's going to happen, but if we're not going to create good habits, um, you know, make sure that our mitochondria is working correctly, blood circulation is good, uh, toxin removal is good, eating antioxidants or whatever that may be for to 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 lower oxidative stress using technologies like uh cold exposure deliberate cold exposure sauna mm -hmm. uh intermittent fasting yeah all that good stuff yeah, yeah. hyperbarics in, in some occasions red light therapy um meditation or some kind of mindfulness Stress, re stress reduction, which is huge. All of those things together do build up and manifest themselves later on. Especially if you're, if you're practicing mindfulness, I think you're going to realize that the same experience as a person you have right now and what you like and don't like right now, that is going to be equivalent to the experience in 20 years. So you're kind of build, rebuilding those 20 years right now. And I think even a better example than that is we all know that in seven years, every cell in our body would have basically replaced itself. So we're kind of not the same person as we're going to be seven years from now. And the information we're feeding those new cells that we're creating is the person we're, that we're going to be in seven years. So we really kind of have to be in that, you know, mindset when yeah, we... Yeah, that long-term mindset. Yeah, I like yeah. it. It's very cool. Yeah. I, I yeah. think uh, I, you've, you've nailed every single thing that we talked about in our yeah. uh, pre-interview. <laughs> pre you've given us a lot to think about and a lot to actually do. It's very, mm -hmm. This is a very proactive uh, recording of our podcast. I think there's a lot to take away. We're going to get back together in seven years and we're going to reorient <laughs> ourselves with our new cells. So we can talk. I do think that you were speaking directly to me because I have a pinky that I never took care of <laughs> after football. I played football in high school and I dislocated. I should have popped it back in. Never took care of it. I went to the doctor a few years later. He was like, we have to re-break it. And I was like, mm, that's going to hurt. But it, I, I, this is always a reminder to me that um, preventative uh, as well as taking care of your, you know, taking care of things pretty quickly after uh, are are really important factors. I I learned a ton. I know everyone else will. Um, Sarah, 
Yes, thank you. It was brilliant. I mean, we could probably do a whole podcast on each of the other topics you brought up because, you know, it's so interesting. You know, I want to learn about all these peptides and I want to learn about the, the special ingredients that you have. But but maybe you can point us towards your website, Amatai, and then people can look that up. And then maybe, who knows, it might be good to have you come back on again and, and kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of those topics. But t- tell everyone where we can find you. And of course, we'll put you up on the Rebel Scientist uh, website. Yeah, thank you very much. And and again, what we are trying to do, uh, just in one word, is really simplify it. Obviously, as 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 you can see, there there is you you can spend a whole lo- lifetime yeah. kind of learning that. Yeah. And what we're trying to be are basically aggregators, right? Build it uh-huh. into systems where people can use and not have to think of all the you know multi- mul- multitude of different avenues they can take. Just they they can use one product and and solve those problems. So people can find us mainly in, in three avenues. Our website, which is younggoose.com. Our, our, our brand is called Young Goose, so it's younggoose.com. Our Instagram, which is extremely informative, and we are trying to cover all of those bases that we've mentioned today, which is uh, young underscore goose underscore uh, skincare. And the third is our podcast, which is called Biohacking Beauty. And in that podcast, we don't really talk about, it's, it's very similar to what we did here. We are, we're not really talking about cosmetics per se, but we're, we're telling you, okay, we have the best products. You don't need to worry about products. Let's take care of everything else. Um, and so we have experts, uh, very similar to what we had, what, what we've done here. Um, very cool. And that is in every channel of however you consume podcasts. I, I assume someone knows how to consume a podcast because they're listening to this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm going to add it to my list because, because there's just so much. Like I say, I, I think I was in your camp, Russ, where I was thinking, you know, your face is the kind of the last thing because it is a little bit vain or I'm spending time in the mirror. But actually, yeah. you know, after, you know, it's so important. So I am going to be listening to that podcast. Thank, thank you so I, much. Always yeah, a pleasure you. to speak to you, Amate. Thank you. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Speak, see you soon, I hope. Next time, yes, Miami. Ma'am. <laughs> Breaking the gray.